What's the best portable tea set for travel? In this video, we're going to find out. We're going to be comparing three tea travel techniques to see which produces the best cup of tea. Each of these have their own advantages and disadvantages, so make sure that you stay tuned to the end to see which one is the best for you. So the Kyusu teapot is the best tool for brewing Japanese green tea, but it has one downside, and that's that it doesn't travel very well. These handmade clay teapots are beautifully crafted, but they can be fragile, particularly on the side handle and the lid. It also adds extra weight, which can be a problem, particularly with those stingy airlines these days. Instead of wrapping it up in bubble wrap, you're better off getting a portable tea set for travel. With the right travel tea brew kit, you can make a delicious cup of tea wherever you are in the world and not have to worry about anything getting broken. I'm going to walk you through three tools I've used at one point or another and seeing which one is the best travel tea brew kit. First, we have a fun one, the portable Kyusu. This is a concept I was first introduced to when I visited a tea shop in Tokyo. It is made out of a heat-resistant resin that is dishwasher safe and unbreakable. I'll be using one I got as a generous gift from Mr. Sakamoto, one of the tea farmers we work with at neoteas.com. Just start by putting five grams of tea leaves into the base of the teapot. I thought it was only appropriate to use Mr. Sakamoto's famous Gyokuro Cha Meijin, a smooth and sweet long-shaded green tea. Next, just pour in about half a cup of warm water. The best temperature for gyokuro is around 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius. We'll let the tea brew for two minutes, but while we're waiting, I'll show you my next tea travel trick. These empty tea bags are made out of silk. You can find them at certain Japanese grocery stores and they can be a lifesaver when you're traveling. The big advantage here is that they don't take up any space or weight, but they still will keep the tea leaves out of your cup. After you've filled up the bag with tea leaves, tuck in the corners to seal it and put it in your cup. Now you can pour the water in and start brewing the tea. Now let's check in on that portable Kyusu. The leaves have done a good job at expanding, which is important when it comes to tea brewing, but let's see how it pours. The pour is not quite as smooth as the clay Kyusu teapot, which has a built-in clay or metal filter, as opposed to just a few small holes. It takes a little longer to pour as the spout clogs easily, but this isn't much of a problem. By the way, the brand here is called Chasta, but there are a few others. But let's test out the final tea travel method, a strainer inside of a cup. I'll just place the tea leaves inside the cup, and while that's brewing, we can compare the first two teas. You'll notice that the tea bag doesn't produce as dark of a color compared to the travel teapot. This is because the leaves are cramped inside the tea bag, and they're not given enough space to expand and release their flavor into the water. This is why you won't find high quality tea being sold in a tea bag. It simply just isn't a good way to prepare it. But let's compare the two. The tea brewed in the portable teapot actually tastes very good. It is sweet, smooth, and nuanced. If I had to critique one aspect of the flavor, it would be that the savory flavor Gyokuro is known for isn't quite as pronounced as it would be in a clay teapot. The clay itself can actually accentuate some of the flavors in a tea, but this is the best cup of tea you'll have on the road. The downside of this portable tea set for travel is that it takes up space. The tea bag, on the other hand, takes up almost no space. The reason we recommend to use a silk tea bag and not a paper one is because silk has the most neutral flavor. This tea doesn't taste as papery as a normal tea bag would, but there is still a slight aftertaste I would prefer to avoid. Plus, the flavor is far weaker because the leaves don't have much space when they're brewing. So the tea bag method is the most portable, but it also produces the worst flavor. Now let's try the final brewing method, the strainer. This method is a happy medium. It doesn't take up as much space as the portable teapot, but the flavor is better than the tea bag. This is usually what I end up traveling with personally. I just bring a tea strainer and almost everywhere I go, I can find a glass and some water. If getting the right water temperature is an issue, you can also cold brew your green tea. This means that you don't have to put in as much guesswork when it comes to brewing time, temperature, and leaf to water ratio. Just put some leaves into a glass, brew it in cool water for about an hour, and then filter it out. So what's the best method for brewing tea while traveling? That depends on what you're looking for. If you want to prepare the best cup of tea and you just don't want to have breakable teaware, the portable teapot is the way to go. If you want convenience and the least amount of equipment, just bring a few of these tea bags on your next adventure. You can even pre-pack the bags with high quality loose leaf tea so that they're ready to go in seconds. If you want a tea travel set that's lightweight but also produces good tasting tea, you can always bring a strainer along with you. This one comes with a teacup that it fits perfectly into, but you should be able to find mugs in most hotels, so you'll just need to bring the strainer with you and some tea of course. As I mentioned before, I like to travel with teas that also work well as a cold brew so the water temperature isn't an issue. For this, I recommend the Fukumushi Yamaga, a deep steam sencha from Shizuoka that works well both hot and cold. You can get this tea on our website neoteas.com so it arrives in time for your next trip. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you next time.